All right, everybody, it is Monday again, and back at the fire station. Uh, I don't know if this is going to be a long video, but I figured, I was, I was getting ready to go to sleep, or actually comping, get some work done, and I figured I'd show you guys part of the fire station that you guys probably don't get to see very often. Uh, you've seen, like, the, the engine bay a couple times, taking you through, like, the watch office and things like that. You've probably seen that stuff on TV, but this is something that's a little bit different. As you can see, I'm in a room with a bed. That's where I sleep. Um, this room coincidentally has a desk, TV. This is actually like one of the luxury suites here for sleeping. Um, I, I will tell you, being the shift officer, because it comes with the responsibility, it comes with perks. One of the perks is I get to sleep in this room, which is nice because it gives me a place to get away when I don't have any calls and I can work on some like homework and things like that. So I got my laptop out. I was going to get ready to work on some homework assignments. This is how, if you got to do stuff... When you have as many responsibilities and things that you do on a regular basis as I do with like work, the fire department, this and that, you got to kind of combine everything together to make it actually work. So when I'm in my downtime and not sleeping here at the fire station, I do a lot of a lot of work on schoolwork, all that fun stuff uh, to get it done. So, but I figured I would show you guys this in case you're thinking about joining a fire service or anything like that, and you're looking at one of those uh, fire stations that you actually stay the night in, like you do here, because not all of them are like this. Uh, certain states do like paid on call or volunteer on call and you actually like respond from your house and you have to live within a certain radius of the fire station. Uh, actually in Michigan, I think that's what a lot of the uh, the volunteer pieces are more like that than they are like it is out here. So I was a little confused when I moved out to, to this area. I'm in Maryland, uh, you know, coming out from D.C. because I assumed I wasn't going to be able to buy, be a person living in D.C., volunteering at a fire station because I thought you had to live within a certain radius of the fire department. Well, it turns out here, you do shifts. So I'm not on call when I'm at home. Then I come here for shifts, stay here, do all that stuff. So everybody works a little bit different. But if you are at one of those stations that happens to do shift work like this where you're going to stay here, you're not going to get necessarily as lucky as I am to have this type of room to stay in. And I actually only get this room for another couple of weeks. They're, uh, they're <laughs> shuffling some things around. But when I started here, I started in one of the bunk rooms. So there's like literally a bunk room that is smaller than this room. It's laid out a little bit differently so it fits them better. But it's got two bunk beds and then a single bed in it. So there's five bunks in the one bunk room. So five of us just would sleep in this one room. There's another shift bunk room next to it that seats two, four, six, eight. I think ten. There's five double bunks in there. Uh, they're actually changing all of it soon because they don't want us to have double bunks anymore. Because the fact that people do get tired. You wake up in the middle of the night for a, a call. People have been known to fall out of the top. Because it, it's dangerous. It's, it's dark. You're groggy. You're falling out of the bed. It happens. So they want to make things safer. So they're rearranging. Making one of our old bigger training rooms into a big bunk room that has a lot of beds on the floor. Not the floor, but like low level beds. Kind of like this one is. Um, so it's a you know just a, a single. You can just get out of it real easy. And they're actually shuffling this around to the duty officer's bunk room which is another level above me they're duty chief um so i got i got a long ways to go before i'm ever chief if i if i'm ever chief i don't know if that's even in my uh, my volunteer career path but this that's this is going to become their room because they're going to be expected to more stay on site which currently they're not a lot of them are local like extremely local and they respond from their house but they're getting a lot more people who are moving up to the duty chief rank who are no longer as close and they have to have a place to be at when they're here in a room like this is it's something they need. They need to have access to the computer, um, a place to, because they'll be on for more than necessarily 12 hours as well. So they need more of a room like this. It's just a luxury for me that I'm taking advantage of while I can. Granted, the shift officer does get a their own room. It's just not as going to be as big. It's not going to have as many amenities. But right now I'm enjoying it while I can. Uh, but this is a side of the fire station that you probably don't get to see in most of the other things that you see about a fire station. This is more like the inner workings of the fire station. This is where we sleep. This is what happens in your off time. Any minute these tones could go off. Somebody asked like what would happen if uh, if the tones went off in the middle of me making the video last time that I had one. And I would, you would hear them and I would quickly say I had to go and then you wouldn't see it anymore because I'd be then jumping in the engine and running. Somebody also did ask, oh I can answer this question. They said what do you do if the tones go off when you're in the shower? Which is an excellent question, because it's only ever actually happened to me once, and it happened to be last week after I made that video, and somebody asked that question, and it was so funny because it was 
I was getting changed, getting ready for work. I'm in the shower, shampooing my hair, and our tones dropped. And I was like, oh God, what time is it? And I looked out the shower, grabbed my phone. It was sitting on the, a little chair sitting outside the shower. And I'm like, it's still our shift. I got to go. Rinses out of my hair as quick as I can and ran downstairs. Pretty much still wet. I th threw these clothes back on. They, they were pretty wet by the time I got to the engine because I didn't have time to dry all the way. And we ended up going out looking for a, a PIC, which is a car accident. Um, so it does happen. It doesn't happen to me often because I try to take really quick showers when I'm here. And a lot of times in the morning when I would be showering, the career guys who come in at 7 o'clock, they're really good about knowing that, for one, other people have to get to work. If they're here, they'll take the call for us at the end of our shift. We do the same thing for them at the end of their shift. We try to take the calls for them so they aren't, they're not stuck here unless they want to be. Um, sometimes the career guys like to take extra calls because they get overtime for it. Uh, so, I mean, that's fine. I mean, I don't get paid for this stuff. So if you want to take an extra call, that's, that's fine by me. Um, what does happen, though, is I have been across the street at 7-Eleven. There's a 7-Eleven right across the street, and we'll walk to it a lot of times. as a big group and go get something to drink, something to eat, you know, while we're just sitting around here all night. And I have been dispatched to multiple different alarms, box alarms, which are actual fires, just general calls. I've been dispatched to a lot of different things across the street. And pretty much it's funny because you just watch, especially if it's a box and you hear the pre-tones go off. And they're like, doo, doo, doo. And you just start darting out of the 7-Eleven and you'll have like four or five firemen running across the street if we're all there together. Um, carefully, of course, looking both ways before we cross the street. But running with a purpose, for sure, because we very well might be getting dispatched to that, that box and if we are, we better get to our engine quick because box alarms, you gotta, you gotta get out the door quick. There's a whole running order if you're dispatched second. You need to be able to get there second. If you don't get there second and you get there third or fourth, and you haven't let people know that you're running behind, or slightly, like, when I say behind, I don't mean like, oh, I'll be 10 minutes late. It's, it's like you're running even like seconds behind. You've got to make sure that information is relayed, so if somebody needs to pick up, if they're going to be in front of you, they might be blocking you out from the hydrant that you called or you're expected to be at, just because they got there before you did. Not necessarily doing anything. Some people try maliciously to get there first because they want that, which really can screw things up. If you just purposely are trying to beat everybody else in, you can screw up the whole route. But pretty much your first dude goes there. They're going to call out your hydrant. Your second dude is going to connect their hydrant for them. That's good. That stuff gets relayed on the, the radio on your way there. But if you're a third dude and you got in there before the second dude did and you happen to block out their connection, their ability to go finish first dude's connection... Things just got kind of screwed up, and somebody needs to at least know that they're going to have to go complete that water supply. Um, but basically, you really want those things to go in order. You want the running order to be the way you arrive on scene, because that's how things get pre-planned when you're en route and route, depending on where the the fire is at, where the hydrants are that you're at, what your your position is. Because everybody, whatever position you are, whatever do you are, quote unquote, you have a different obligation and responsibility on the fire ground. So. When those orders get screwed up because somebody got there before you and you didn't have time to relay that they got there before you, but it was enough to actually bump you back a position, you got to watch out for it. I know it's, it's a little bit confusing for people who don't understand it, and I did not explain it very well, but if you're not in the fire service, it's not going to make much sense to you. But pretty much, you're dispatched first through fifth do essentially, and if people start showing up out of order or people say, hey, I'm going to beat this person in at the last second, you know, make me second do instead of third do, all the plans that you had going on are now like out the window and you got to kind of start over. So it's not good when that happens. You really want things to go in the order they dispatch. If they're not going to, the earlier you know that, the better, because if you already know, hey, look, we're stuck behind this type of like accident on the highway or dispatch third, we're not going to make it third. We're not going to make it until fifth do, I can tell you. Letting people know that information up front is a very good thing. People might get a little upset with you, but you need to relay that information. It's not about you. It's about making sure everything runs smoothly on the fire ground. I just went off on a big like tangent about that stuff when I was just trying to show you guys like a room that I sleep in. Uh, but anyways... Hope you guys enjoyed this week. I've been, uh, I've, I've had a pretty stressful and rough week getting ready for, you know, the baby and stuff coming up in 10 days now is the official due date. Uh, so we'll figure out that. But I got some schoolwork to do before these tones go off again. And guys, I will see you next time.